Okay, now, so we have to discuss, like we have already got the idea about the compound dimensions, the linear dimensions and how we proceed further with the design process of a vehicle, right? But it is not sufficient, this is just to start up with. Okay, if I ask you, like, let's go with the axis system of vehicle. Axis system, no or we know X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, it's okay. But if we go with the axis system of the vehicle, if this is my vehicle, I told you the terminology of the subject you are dealing with. Hmm. So if this is my vehicle, if this is my four wheeled vehicle, the axis that is passing through the center of the vehicle, obviously, the axis that is passing through the center of the vehicle in the front and the rear direction, in the front and the rear direction is known as longitudinal axis is known as longitudinal axis right okay now this is the centroid location centroid location the center the center the axis that passes through the center of the vehicle dividing it into front and rear sorry in the longitudinal axis from the right and left from the longitudinal axis that passes along this line but differentiate or divides it into the right and left, sorry, right and left, and the axis that passes through the center of the line, center of the vehicle, center of the vehicle along the right and left direction, along the right and left direction, or basically we could sure that divide the vehicle into the front and rear part is lateral axis, is lateral axis. And pal axis that passes through top and down. Top and down. This is my vehicle, the top and down. If this is my vehicle, this is my vehicle. Moving in this direction. Zzz, moving in this direction. Right? So this is the longitudinal direction. This is the lateral direction from right to left is the lateral direction. From front to rear is the longitudinal direction. And from top to down. From top to down is the transverse axis with the circle I am denoting it transverse axis this is very important for us to always remember this axis system though uh, most of the people already know about this thing the axis that passes through the front and rear is the longitude that passes through the right and left the little axis and the passes through top to down is the transverse axis why I ask you to remember this thing all the time is because of the movements that are associated while your vehicle is in dynamic condition is because of the movements that are associated with these axes when your vehicle is in dynamic state okay so whenever I take my vehicle for a ride right I took my vehicle I'm riding you will always feel because of the surface irregularities the road irregularities because we need the friction we can't have a slippery surface there would be some irregularities there should be some irregularities where your tire will start to dump in will uh, rise up the irregularities, it also depends on the natural frequency between the system, of the system. Right? We will discuss about these things too if we ever get a time. Or like in the upcoming series of the webinars, we will discuss about these things too. Hmm. So now, if this is my vehicle, this motion along the longitudinal axis, if this is my longitudinal axis, this is my vehicle, right? I would better say, if this is my vehicle, Right? This is my vehicle moving in this direction, moving in this direction. The longitudinal axis that passes through it. See the longitudinal axis. The movement of the vehicle, the movement of the vehicle with the longitudinal axis. With the long, this is the longitudinal axis. This is my vehicle. The lo this irregular motion. The motion along the longitudinal axis. The movement along the longitudinal axis is known as roll. Is known as roll. Right? Or we can call it rolling. We can also call it the rolling axis. The movement along the trans, uh, sorry, along the lateral axis. This is my vehicle. I could say now at this time, at this time, this is my vehicle. This is the lateral axis. The movement of the vehicle. Pitching down, pitching up. Pitching down, pitching up. Whenever you apply the brake, whenever you apply the brake, chop, you can see your vehicle is pitching down. In the forward direction, your vehicle is pitching down. Right? When you accelerate, you can see the person sitting at the rear end. He can feel the jump. Right? Moving up. 
right? Pitching up. This movement along the lateral axis is axis is known as pitching. Is known as pitching. And now the transverse axis, the top to down. Whenever you provide any steering input to the vehicle, if this is my vehicle from me to you, this is my vehicle, the movement of the vehicle, see this change in direction, change in direction is associated with the transverse axis, and this movement is known as yaw. This movement is known as yaw. This movement is known as yaw. Like I have seen this thing, like most of the students, most of the people used to forget, forget which axis has got which movement. Though they remember the complete denotion, but they forget the names. Which axis has got which name? Longitudinal, lateral, transverse. People know about this thing, even you know about this thing, I can explain. Everyone knows about this thing, I know. But as a matter of time, sometimes we used to forget. So I, I should give you a very small uh, formulation or something to remember. R, P, Y. R, P, Y. Rolling, pitching, yaw. Roll, pitch, yaw. Roll, pitch, yaw. Longitudinal lateral transverse. Longitudinal lateral transverse. Longitudinal lateral transverse. Roll, pitch, yaw. You could never forget this thing. Rolling, sideways movement. Whenever you start a vehicle, whenever you ride a vehicle, whenever you drive a vehicle, you can see this thing. The undesirable input is the rolling. Pitching, whenever you apply the brake or whenever you accelerate your vehicle along the lateral axis, this is pitching. And whenever you provide the steering input, that is the yaw. That is yaw. Now there is one thing to remember, or one thing that you can find from this video, or from this, uh, this, this complete diagram, this figure. That is, yaw is the only desirable input. Yaw is the only desirable input. That is, I am providing the steering. When I apply the brake, I apply the brake to stop my vehicle, not to pitch down. Right? So, this is the resultant, this is the resultant of the inertial forces that are acting on the vehicle. If a vehicle doesn't pitch down, all the weight, all the inertial loads will act on the driver's body or the components associated or fixed with the vehicle. Right? If your vehicle doesn't pitch down, doesn't pitch down. It means I am running, I am running, I am running, and suddenly I apply the brake. Chick. I apply the brake. It means what will happen? The sudden jerk will be producing all the components and all the things that are being associated with the vehicle. It means that if you are driving it or if there are the passengers being seated, whenever you apply the brake or your vehicle doesn't pitch down, it means all the G forces, the change in momentum, will occur on your body. Will occur on the complete structure of the vehicle. The change in momentum will occur on each and every component associated or being mounted on the vehicle. That's why this pitching is important. This pitching provides the extra cushioning effect. This pitching provides the extra cushioning effect. And now this should be regulated. We have to calculate the exact value of the cushioning or exact value of the uh, uh, of the what, what I could say. The inertial forces that are going to be generated because of the braking. We got this thing. Now it has got very specific role with the chassis frame design too. Yes, it creates the immense bending load, immense bending load in the vehicle, and that bending load has to be compensated by the theory of B. So if you haven't read the theory of B yet, just turn down the pages of second years of the strength of material, right? And find what is the theory of B. You can understand this. Okay. So yaw is the only desirable input in the vehicle. Yaw is the only desirable input in the vehicle. This is the only steering input that you are providing. Again, there could be some irregularities. There should be some weed out things which you don't want. Under steer, over steer, slipping, Kidding, jacking, there could be anything which you don't want, or maybe you want to invest your own steel. There could be anything. But the only thing that is truthful to this figure is law is the only desirable input or the action which you have provided. You have provided the action for law, but you haven't provided the action for pitch. You haven't provided the action for roll, but it happens in the vehicle. And rolling movement has got a very crucial role in the design of the chassis frame structure. With the design of the chassis frame structure, rolling has got a very specific role. While you design a vehicle, while you design a vehicle with stiffness, 
The rigidity will have provided your chassis frame structure will define what is the rolling input that you are going to have in your weight. 